For this edition of the Blue Tiger Traveler, I decided to stay home, choosing instead to let three veterans tell their stories of traveling to and fighting in countries that are thousands of miles away from Jefferson City, Missouri. From 1939 until 1945, World War II raged across several countries, including the beaches of Normandy in France. At the age of 18, Morris Harrison was among the thousands of soldiers who landed there and took part in a vicious and bloody battle against Hitler's forces. Out of the 1,500 casualties that day, he was fortunate enough to survive. I took my basic train to Camp Wheeler, Georgia. That's the, and and I, I wasn't supposed to leave there. Just an 18-year-old boy. I walked that 25 miles and looked like nobody's business and learned my basic training. After we loaded us on my ship and we crossed the English Channel, it was, uh, we, uh, we knew the invasion was coming on. We know that. You're so damn scared you don't see nothing. You're so scared you, you, you don't stop to pick you up if you're shot and wounded. Help me, help me, help me. I'm hot dying, I'm bleeding to death. You don't stop. Take care of yourself and get ashore. That, that was the main object. You had to get ashore. Fighting was on. Ping, ping, ping. You hear them. You, when you hear that air going by, you know you're damn well he's shooting at you. <laughs> Pshing, you hear that go by like a ping, and you hear it pop. It's, it's, I never talk about it. It's, you never forget it. You never forget it. The Vietnam War was a violent, highly protested conflict that left American soldiers in a less than positive light when they returned home. Danny Burton faced life and death every day in Vietnam, all for a war that he joined out of novelty and a curious interest. Let me think why I went in the Army. I think it was because John Kennedy had a speech of, uh, don't ask what your country can do for you, do, ask what you can do for your country. And, uh, that got me into it. Going to Vietnam was curiosity. I had heard about it and what, what was going on and, and uh, when I was getting ready to turn 18 and had to go there in my last year to see what was it all about. We, uh, we were, uh, I was an engineer, Hobbit engineer, and we used to do roads, uh, sweep the main roads for booby traps. And I come, come to one booby trap, I was checking a culvert and uh, I seen this fishing line. I thought, you know, being on the coast, that's all it was, was washing down fishing line. I started to take my hand and go down and pull it away. But I got down a little bit and thought I'd better uh, stop and see what was on the other side. Well, there was a hand grenade. Yeah, if I'd have kept going, I'd have blown my head off. Afghanistan, I, th I think that's a good job because that's where the terrorists were coming from. Uh, Iraq, I don't know, we, they weren't bothering us. And someone would have got, got that guy sooner or later. And, and just the, uh, the treatment they're getting now, calling all of them heroes, where we didn't have that benefit. So that kind of... Bums me out once in a while. Not unlike Vietnam, the current battle in the Middle East carries mixed emotions from one American to the next. Major Patrick Kent is a veteran of the war in Iraq, and he shared a few of his experiences from the early days of the ongoing struggle, as well as thoughts on the protests that still happen today. I am a uh, major in the United States Army, uh, stationed here at Lincoln University, and I arrived here from 4th Infantry Division out of Fort Hood, Texas. And 2005 is when I deployed directly to Iraq uh, as part of the 4th Infantry Division. And that was the first time uh, at Camp Fallujah when I got there, getting off the helicopter, realized that, okay, we're now in harm's way, but I would rather be there in harm's way and have to fight in another country than to have to fight on American so soil in order to protect my friends and family and our way of life there. And as soon as I got there, they had just suffered an IED attack we had one soldier injured who lost his foot. The next morning, we were uh, going on the same, the same highway that he was on in order to go visit him in the hospital. So it was a reality check of, hey, I, I may not make it back. I've signed up to uh, support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. 
And so we, we hold true to that. And so from the soldier standpoint of view, when the leaders of this nation call upon us, then we're going to answer the call. And so we fight for those freedoms. We fight to get those freedoms in other places. And if here in America there are those that uh, they have the freedom and the right to disagree. And so we, we understand that. But we support each other. We support our nation's leaders. And that's why we are there. On behalf of the Blueprint and the Blue Tiger Traveler, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge all of our veterans, past and present, alive or dead. Thank you from all of us for defending the freedoms that many of us take for granted. This has been Chris Wyatt.